because I can. Popular enough phrase, maybe you've used it yourself, but I'm wondering whether in your world it's been a positive or a negative, because I mean, it sounds like a rally cry. It sounds like you're rallying all of your, you know, your energy and your strength to do what you need to do, and you're going to do it despite the challenges, because I can. But so often in my experience, it has been used to justify negative behavior or at least an uncaring, uh, I don't care what this does to other people, I'm going to do it because I can. And it's also been my experience that because I can is a very incredibly dangerous mindset for marginalized people, especially indigenous. Let's talk about it. Hi, everybody. My name is Sandy Boucher. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan, a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Treaty 3 territory in Northern Ontario. And we're going to talk about because I can. But before I do that, just a little reminder, a little refresher here. There are three natural human reactions to either long-term oppression or internalized oppression. And in Canada, I don't know if there, I, there isn't any other group that has been oppressed for as long as Indigenous peoples because, yes, the oppression continues. And if you're a member of an oppressed group, a group that's been oppressed for a long period of time, you internalize that oppression. You start to believe the stereotypes about yourself and the people in your group. You start thinking, I can't do that because we don't do that. It gets really dangerous. So just a refresher, the three natural human reactions. The first one is violence. If it feels like the entire world is telling you you're less than, at some point, you may lash out. The problem, it's really hard to pop the oppressor in the nose if the oppressor is the federal government. So people lash out against the people closest to them, their partners, their children, their community members, or the members of the municipality nearby. It's not desirable, but it's definitely understandable when you realize it's a reaction to the environment. You have heard me say it a hundred times, indigenous in Canada are flowers trying to grow when soil doused in gasoline. Violence is a natural reaction. Even scarier, from my opinion, is acquiescence, the complete and total giving up. And you recognize this in people because they start saying things like, why bother? Why bother going to school? It's never going to change anything. Why bother trying to get a career or become educated? They're never going to hire us. Why bother sending my kids to school? It didn't change anything for me. People are judged for a reaction to the environment. You don't blame the flower. You fix the environment, as my favorite quote says. But the third reaction is what I push people to every single day. It's nonviolent resistance, which in layman's terms is deciding not to be the stereotype. So I wrote down um, some examples here. I didn't have my uh, index cards with me. I actually had a little notebook with me. So for Indigenous, it's choosing... You know, maybe, I know, so many Indigenous elders or older adults, well, I guess my age now, who are incredibly hardworking. 
And as a youth choosing to mimic that and have that amazingly strong work ethic, that's nonviolent resistance because the stereotype says we're a lazy, we're a drain on the public coffers, we're quote unquote welfare bums. So choosing that work ethic is nonviolent resistance. Another one is financial stability. You've heard me say it before. Poverty is not our culture. It is simply the environment we've lived in for too long. You don't stop being indigenous with a healthy bank account. And you don't have to have a healthy bank account. You can have a healthy bank account without ripping people off. That thinking that that's the only way to be financially stable is actually internalized oppression. It's one of the things we tell ourselves. So choosing to be financially stable without looking down on other people, of course. Another one that many Indigenous are choosing now is to be highly educated. The stereotype says that we're unintelligent or an S word I'm not going to use that we hear in our brains on a regular basis. So many Indigenous people are choosing the academic path and even more are choosing sobriety because there are so many stereotypes out there about the drunk Indian. Now, it's that last one that I want to touch on today because this is where Cuz I Can becomes dangerous because the stereotype is that we're all addicts or alcoholics. I have heard people choose to drink because I can. No one's going to tell me I can't because I'm indigenous, right? Do you see how this is becoming a negative? I'll prove it to you. I'll prove I can drink. I'll prove that I don't need to work. I'm not going to join your capitalistic system. I'm going to prove to you that I don't need school to get by. These people convince themselves that that's nonviolent resistance, and it absolutely is not because you're still trying to prove something to them, which means them are still in charge. That's not empowerment. That's oppression. That's internalized oppression. So if you want to do nonviolent resistance, if you want to overcome the barriers, by the way, what you choose to focus on is going to multiply. So if you're going to sit there and list off all of the reasons why we can't succeed, I guarantee you, you will not succeed. St and focus instead on why you will, right? Focus on being the best you possible. I don't care about the size of your bank account. Are you a kind person? Are you a compassionate person? Are you building your wisdom? Are you building your confidence? Are you learning from life? Are you grateful for the lessons that Crater sends every single day? Those that you can choose no matter where you live or who you're standing or who you're standing beside. What I wrote down this morning was Crater sent you for a reason. You are needed and you are so much more then alcohol abuse, violence, or poverty. Those are the stereotypes. And we are so much better than that. I am not saying you can't have a drink. I am not saying that you can't choose to do something because you want to. But is it because you want to? I don't believe there is one person on the planet who genuinely wants to be a horrible person. Because every single person I've met who has choosing that cuz I can attitude, choosing to be disrespectful and rude, is doing it because they were hurt. They are doing it in reaction, meaning whoever hurt them is still in charge. In the words of our elders, go back to who you were before the others came. That beautiful child who believed in dreams, that beautiful child that was excited to find the cool rock in the front yard and the amazing flower. Discover new things. Do things that make you feel proud of you. Self-respect is incredibly empowering. Don't do things to escape or because I can. Do something to make yourself proud choose to say a kind word, choose to open, open up a door, choose to help the elder in the community because you can. Not for money, not for thanks, but because that's the kind of person you want to be. That 
is how we overcome oppression. I know because I'm doing it. I hope that resonated. I hope that made sense. Please share this with anyone you think it could help because there's a lot of people out there trying to heal. And some people we need to help get on the healing path. Until tomorrow, I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.